Hi, I'm Edwin Moses, and welcome to Atlanta, the centennial Olympic city. Typical Southern hospitality and many interesting scenes await you here. In 1996, Atlanta is expecting millions of visitors from everywhere in the world. I hope that you will also be our guest. At Line Willie's, blues rule the roost. Musical greats such as Junior Wells and Luther Allison have plucked and strummed their guitars on stage at the city's most legendary blues club. But the real perennial here is Luther House Rocker Johnson. House Rockers gigs are always well attended, so if you want one of the coveted standing room only spots, be sure to get in line early. Atlanta's nightlife presents itself from its most glittering side in Buckhead. The bars, clubs, and restaurants attract both natives and visitors from all over the world. Hi, I'm Christian. I've lived here for two years. I'm from Europe, and I'm here in the middle of Buckhead, which is the hot spot where all the bars are, all the restaurants are, and I would like to show you a very unique place, the Peachtree Cafe. If you would like to follow me? The Peachtree Cafe will get you off to a good start in Buckhead's nightlife. Here you can select a bite to eat from the extensive menu and over a drink, make your first contacts for the next couple of hours or longer. In Buckhead, the nights are long. The district of Buckhead has many faces. Exclusive restaurants and elegant cafes and bars have made the area a popular promenade for Atlanta's upper class. Whether a loud rock concert-like backdrop, a cozy bar atmosphere, or the glitzy ambiance of a nightclub, whatever your idea of fun is, you'll find the right surroundings for it here. Otto's, a favorite meeting place for those who like to mingle. If you don't meet someone who tickles your fancy in the live music area, don't despair. The next opportunity to flirt is just up the stairs. Here in the disco, the beauties of the night dance till dawn, and those who've mastered the art of rhythmic movement stand a good chance of not having to go home alone. The Chattahoochee Nature Center has been in existence for about 25 years plus. 
And uh, basically, we're an environmental education facility. We're nonprofit. We're not associated with the government in any way, shape, or form. And there's also a wetlands trail, which is across the street from the Nature Center, goes out into uh, the area of the Chattahoochee River itself. Uh, there's a marsh and a swamp area out there. A lot of interesting waterfowl, different kinds of animal life out there. It's a boardwalk trail. Uh, people with small children can take strollers on that trail because it is flat and wheels roll on it real well. Uh, the forest trail, however, is a forest trail with roots and rocks, so you, you do have to plan on walking that one. The main building houses our gift shop. A lot of interesting items in the gift shop. Uh, there's also a lot of good information there. The people who work in the store uh, can actually help uh, uh, individuals who are interested in attracting birds uh, or feeding birds, telling, giving them advice on what type of seed to feed them and what kind of houses to put up, where to put them up, how high, and so on. In addition to, to those things, we have a large birds of prey aviary. It houses our uh, hawks, owls, and vultures. And uh, we also have two bald eagles on display, which are really interesting to, to see. Uh, we, we have many, many guests here, about 150,000 people a year come to the Nature Center. And uh, that includes the public as well as our, our scheduled programs for reservations um, from schools and other groups. Uh, we do about 70,000 children, school children here a year that come to the property. We do not name the animals here, primarily because we deal so much with children. We try to uh, get children to draw a distinction between wild animals and pets. Uh, these are wild animals, therefore we don't name them, and we give the children pretty much the same answer as well. In America, striptease clubs have a long tradition, and they enjoy a much better reputation than in far-off Europe. Free from an unsavory, dirty image, this textile-free entertainment form is part of the profile of practically every big American city nowadays. The prettiest girls dance and disrobe for the mostly male public, although there are usually some cool, no touching allowed, gentlemen are definitely appreciated. I'm a member of the 1984 Olympic 4x100 meter relay team. My name is Wendy Vereen. I'm standing in the area of Atlanta University Center where Morris Brown, Morehouse College, Clark Atlanta University will be holding the 1996 Olympic field hockey and basketball. Hi, my name is Peter Salisbury and uh, I'm one of the cake designers here at Classic Cheesecakes. We're located in the heart of Buckhead. We used to be a uh, wholesale bakery and uh, due to the needs of our customers for specialized cakes, wedding cakes, pound cakes, about 20 varieties of cheesecake, we've gravitated towards the uh, specialty cake business. That doesn't mean you can't walk in and get a cake anytime you want for lunch or dessert. Uh, one of our specialties here is sculpted cakes. We can make cakes into just about any form that you desire. We've made pigs and lions and uh, the Leaning Tower of Pisa, the Eiffel Tower, a Rolls Royce, dirty old vans, whatever you want. Um, we also have a year-round Christmas shop here and we specialize in uh, German hand-blown Christmas ornaments and um, we keep that up year-round. Um, we're always trying to improve, we're always trying to do new things and uh, we'd love to see you here at our store. Atlanta is also home to the world's largest news broadcaster. The 24-hour news channel CNN is a much sought after place of employment among journalists from all over the world. German newswoman Bettina Lutcher has the good fortune of belonging to the chosen few. Yeah, we have uh, journalists from all over the world who do news broadcasts for the world. So what we do is we tell stories that happen all over the world, not just in America, despite that our headquarters are in America. And uh, you can see us uh, around the clock, wherever you are, various television stations take us uh, in Africa, in Asia, in Latin America, in Europe. 
if there's important news happening, like something in the in the Middle East or so, we have uh, connections to broadcasters all over the world, and we take their program, we take their pictures, we bring in our own commentators, we send reporters all over the world. And the most exciting parts of working here as an anchor at CNN International is if we go to those stories live and stay with the story for hours, cover cover it in depth, look at it from every angle and bring it to you right while it happens. And I think that's, that's the most important thing about CNN International. The saloons of the Wild West were bright, loud and full of smoke. Today, Atlanta's country folk mosey on over to cowboys in the suburb of Kennesaw. The dance hall may outwardly look a lot like a disco, but don't let that fool you. Here, it's pure country, and out on the dance floor, you can join in the line or square dancing to live music. Whoever comes expecting a glimpse into the real life and times of cowboys, however, will be disappointed. Pistol-packing bad guys have to remain outside, and even your average barroom brawl is quickly nipped in the bud by the security sheriffs. Every Western fan's heart beats a little faster at Cowpuncher's Palace. This paradise for amateur and professional cowboys leaves nothing to be desired. That starts with boots. No real country dude takes them off, ever, even at night. Then there are the massive belt buckles, available with your own initials, or the Western-style shirts in every imaginable color and cloth, with a string tie to match. Of course, the real pride and joy of every cowboy or gal is the hat, preferably a Stetson. And to top it all off, there's a huge selection of all the accessories today's cowboy could possibly want or need. Here at Cowpunch, we have boots made from all different leathers. We have horse hide, we have mule hide, we have python, we have cobra, stingray, anteater, bull hide, kangaroo, Alligator, Cape Buffalo, Hippo, Lizard, Iguana, Water Snake, Ostrich, Mule, just about anything you'd want. So well, about 8,000 pairs of different hides. So you come to Cowpuncher's Palace and we can, I think we can take care of you with your Western clothes, Western boots. Just behind me is the Atlanta Cyclorama, where when you walk through the doors, you step into the pages of our nation's history. On a blistering day in July, 1864, the Battle of Atlanta made its entry into the painful diary of Civil War conflict. 17 times a day, this battle unfolds once again in a massive circular painting. Atlanta was once called Marthasville, and because of the train station downtown, it became such a haven for industry that it grew into the city of Atlanta. During the war between the states, the famous Sherman made his march all the way through the south, stopping once he got to the sea. Along his way, he burnt everything in sight, including the city of Atlanta. But Atlanta rose from the ashes. Our symbol is the phoenix, the bird that rises from the ashes. The Atlanta Cyclorama also houses a fascinating Civil War museum and a bookstore offering a storehouse of items related to the period. Everything from exciting replicas to recipes from the 1800s. Here too, the Texas can be found. This steam locomotion played a starring role in the great locomotion chase in April 1862. When you cross the threshold of the Atlanta Cyclorama, you step into the pages of history turning to a memorial chapter in our nation's past. Hi, I'm Edwin Moses. The Olympic Games will celebrate its 100th anniversary in 1996. Since the announcement of Atlanta as the host of the 1996 Olympic Games, the city has been changing its face. 
New Olympic sites have been built or renovated, and a new Olympic park has been constructed in the heart of the city. Atlanta will host the Games of the Century. The city is expecting over 2 million visitors. Of this number, 15,000 will be journalists and 75,000 members of the Olympic family. 11 million tickets will be sold, as many as in Los Angeles and Barcelona together. Television coverage will broadcast 2,100 hours of Olympic events for over 2 billion viewers. Hopefully, you can come and see the games in Atlanta for yourself. Edwin Moses is one of the most successful athletes of all time. At the age of 21, he won a gold medal in the 400-meter hurdles in the 1976 Olympic Games in Montreal. And he continued to dominate this discipline for over a decade. Behind me, you see the Atlanta Financial Center. This is now my place of employment. Atlanta is the boom town of the American South with one of the largest and busiest airports in the world. The most famous international company based in Atlanta is, of course, Coca-Cola. The news network CNN has become an institution in just one decade. More than 75% of the 1,000 leading United States firms are represented in Atlanta, as well as 1,400 international enterprises from 40 countries. Atlanta, according to economic predictions, has a great economic future in front of it. Because of this, my family and I returned to the city where I once studied. Edwin Moses is a man of many talents. His athletic prowess also enabled him to receive a scholarship and he was awarded a degree in physics from Atlanta's most renowned college. We're standing here today on the campus of Morehouse College, my alma mater. Morehouse is known to be an institution of higher academic achievement and great pride in the black American community. We're standing here in front of the monument that's dedicated to Howard Thurman. One of his main quotes has been, over the heads of her students, Morehouse holds a crown that she challenges them to grow tall enough to wear. There have been many other students of great notoriety that have come from Morehouse. Dr. Martin Luther King is our greatest representative. Spike Lee, noted filmmaker, and also myself. This picture, of course, I believe says it all about Morehouse College and its famous alumni. Dr. Martin Luther King, a great civil rights leader, uh, paid the ultimate price uh, for dignity for all human beings. And Maynard Jackson, three-time mayor of Atlanta, as well as many other individuals who have a very close relationship with Morehouse College. Here's a culinary tip from Edwin Moses. Lately, he's been dining at Fratelli di Napoli, at present the city's most popular Italian restaurant. Good evening. Thank you, Tony. You're welcome, Edwin. What would you recommend this evening for? I would recommend either the Papadelli Fungi or the Snapper Basilico. I'll go with the Snapper. Okay, let me get that for you. All right, thank you. Okay, Edwin? Okay. Wow, that looks great, Tony. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. It. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, thanks. Okay. And I hope you enjoy this when you come to Atlanta as well. Friedman's, Friedman's Shoes is a very, very interesting place. It was opened in 1905, and at Friedman's we repaired shoes, and over the years we've changed into probably the largest discount shoe store in the country. Now we make up our own shoes, and as you see the shoe I'm holding in my hand, we're stocking everything up to size 20. And with the specialization came all the athletes. We get the Shaquille O'Neal's, we get the Nick Anderson's, we get the Dominic Wilkins, we get all the basketball players, all the football players, all the baseball players. And me being a sports nut, it makes it really, really fun. And we're dealing with people who can buy whatever they want. So you can be real creative and make alligator boots for $1,000 a pair or make alligator boots for $2,000 a pair. And these are the guys who can afford to buy it. Everybody that comes here once, we, we hope to make a friend and make people want to come back to see us. And we try to cover every need a man has for his shoes, in, in the idea of shoes. And that's what we do.
Hi, I'm a 1976 and 1980 Olympian in the sport of track and field as a high jumper. My name is Paula Pittman and I'm standing at the Fulton County Stadium and Olympic Stadium. Fulton County Stadium is the home of the Atlanta Braves in the Olympic baseball competition. The Olympic Stadium will host the opening and closing ceremonies and the track and field events as well. I participated in the games of the 23rd Olympiad in Seoul, Korea in the sport of Taekwondo. Hi, I'm Sharon Jewell, member of the United States Olympic Taekwondo team where I received a bronze medal in the women's middleweight division in Seoul, Korea. I'm standing here in Atlanta, Georgia in front of the Georgia Dome, which is the home stadium for the Atlanta Falcons, the professional football team here. It's the largest cable supported stadium it hosts 72,000 fans. Uh, during the Olympics, however, it will be divided into two sections, where 35,000 fans will watch the basketball Olympic competition. At the same time, 32,000 fans will watch and follow the gymnastic competition. In addition to that, the Georgia Dome will also have the final competition for team handball. I was a member of the 1980 Olympic team where I competed as a high jumper. My name is Nathaniel Page. Now I'm standing here in front of Georgia Tech's Aquatic Center, which was built especially for the 1996 Olympics. This is a covered stadium which seats 14,000 spectators. I participated on the 1980 Olympic team in basketball for the United States. Hi, my name is Debbie Miller Palmore. I'm standing right outside the World, the Georgia World Congress Center, which is the second largest convention center in all of the United States. Uh, held here this summer during the game will be several sports. We'll have judo, fencing, wrestling, handball, and weightlifting. Uh, the Georgia World Congress Center is also part of the Olympic Center, which also includes the Omni and the Dome. Services at the Hillside Truth Baptist Church. These services are always full of surprises, especially for the strangers in attendance here. That's because when the Reverend Dr. Barbara King backed up by the powerful voices of the gospel choir holds her sermon. The mood is anything but that of silent devotion. Amen. People sing and sway to the beat. And if the significant words from the pulpit don't keep you glued to your seat, you're allowed to show your enthusiasm standing up. Visitors who want a real taste of black cultural heritage, the Hillside Truth Baptist Church offers a unique experience that you'll never forget. In Virginia Highland, you can't help but come across Jimmy Watson's Barbershop. Whether or not you then trust your hairdo to the old hand is up to you. After all, Atlanta's oldest barber has reached the ripe old age of 79, and he's been in the hair business for almost as long. About 60 years. 
A haircut becomes a matter of trust and the coiffure is a bit more on the conventional side. But then nobody here wants anything to do with hairstyling. Well, I just give them the old fashioned uh, haircut. I don't do anything fancy. With a stoic calm, Jimmy performs his handiwork that's at least as classic as the price. Eight dollars. Sports bars such as Jock and Chills are a permanent fixture in the American way of life. Here, people get together to discuss the performances of their favorite teams over beer and ribs, or to follow the games on one of the countless TVs. Regulars like Mark Smith are happy to give newcomers to the scene a friendly pointer or two on American sports. We're here in a typical sports bar, Jocks and Jills. And uh, Atlanta's a very big sports town. We have many professional teams as well as college teams. The hottest professional team right now is the Atlanta Braves. We're in the World Series, and we've been to the World Series three of the last four years. Uh, we also have a professional football team, the Atlanta Falcons, and a professional basketball team, the Atlanta Hawks. College sports is also big here, where we have Georgia Tech, which is in the first division, and then many other schools, which are in the second, third, and fourth divisions. We, if you can, get a ticket to come to the game. Many times you'll come to a sports bar like this where they have a hundred televisions and you can find any game that's being played anywhere in the country. Of course, when the baseball world champs, the Atlanta Braves are playing, the mood in Jock and Jill's reaches an all-time high. Hi, I'm Lee Haney and welcome to Atlanta. Anyone who might also feel the urge to get their fitness level back in shape can do so at bodybuilding star Lee Haney's training studio. I began in the field of bodybuilding at the age of 11 years old. It was always my dream to be a Samson or a strong man such as my grandfather or my dad. And it slowly turned into a, a reality for me by winning first the Teenage America and then the Junior America, the Mr. America, the Universe. And but then going to win the Mr. Olympia eight consecutive times to break Arnold's record. Um, I'm also uh, happy at the fact that I chose this field because I can help so many people uh, in staying uh, healthier and being fit uh, as a way of lifestyle. I have personally chosen to be a part of the Paralympics and to make the world-class fitness center accessible to those uh, athletes that are taking place. I feel the Paralympics are very important and these are special athletes, especially due to the fact that they've been able to overcome obstacles that most people would not have been able to do. So you can be whatever you want to be if you're willing to work for it. Convenience is made through inconvenience. Atlanta can proudly boast that it is the home of the famous author Margaret Mitchell, who wrote the classic Gone with the Wind in her house on Peachtree Street. Because of her similarity to actress Vivian Leigh, who played Scarlet in the film version, today Melly Meadows very nicely fills the role of the Southern Belle as Atlanta's official representative. Margaret Mitchell grew up in Atlanta, and she was a writer at the Atlanta Journal and Constitution. She was bedridden when her husband said to her, Margaret, why don't you write your own book? So she began writing Gone with the Wind. She started with the last chapter first, and the character was named Pansy O'Hara. Gone with the Wind instantly became a number one bestseller and has sold more copies than any book in history, second only to the Bible. Atlanta and Gone with the Wind and Margaret Mitchell, it's all part of the South, the true South. I think Margaret Mitchell wanted to emphasize Southern hospitality. It's a way of life. It's not just the way you behave, it's the way you treat people and a feeling inside of your heart. It's warm, it's a still magnolia, a lady who's strong yet sweet, a man that's tough yet tender. I don't know, it's the South. I guess that's what I like about the South. On the 17th of September, 1995, the Mitchell House was almost completely destroyed by fire. It seemed as if one of Atlanta's most popular tourist attractions was gone forever. But thanks to a large German automobile manufacturer, it has been rebuilt. 
With $5 million, Daimler-Benz sponsored a true to the original reconstruction of the Mitchell Estate. Auburn Avenue is regarded as a site of great historical significance for the black civil rights movement. Located here is Martin Luther King's tomb and the house he was born in. Atlanta's mayor, Bill Campbell, knows why over three million tourists a year make their way down this history-laden street. Atlanta is known principally for its most renowned son, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The one place that is visited by more tourists and conventionaires and those who live here and love the city is the birthplace and the resting place of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He was born on the great Auburn Avenue. He lived there, he preached there, and he led the great civil rights movement from Auburn Avenue. And so it is perhaps our most special and fitting place for our visitors when they come to our city. Welcome to Atlanta and Moose Breath Trading Company. Our company specializes in restaurant decor. I'm standing around some of our treasured pieces right now. Let's just take a panoramic view. We have a number of old barber chairs in stock right now. Here's an example of some of the work that we do here. This is a restored Coke box. Um, it dates probably from the 50s. It's in super working condition. It probably is in better condition now than the day it was manufactured because the paints are better. Standing behind us are a couple of the gas pumps. This style pump would have, been, would have dated from the 30s. This one would have been a little later. This is probably from the 40s, early 50s. This is a fiberglass piece that would have been used in a, um, in a hamburger franchise restaurant. Uh, another unique piece that we would use to decorate in a sports bar. This is a baseball player. He's dressed as if it was the 1920s, and he's carved out of a single piece of wood. This kind of stuff you'll see behind me is, uh, is what we use to decorate a restaurant. This stuff is also very popular in Europe right now. We do ship containers to Europe with this kind of stuff that are used in uh, decorating American style bars. And uh, I hope you enjoy your visit to Atlanta and in particular to Moose Breath Trading Company. Thank you. My name is Olga Korbut. I'm a gymnast. I won four gold and two silver medals on two Olympic Games, 1972 and uh, 1976. Uh, from Munich, I became a big star. It's not easy to be a big star. And now I live in Atlanta for almost five years. And first time I will be, I represent my country, Belarus, like official attaché in Olympic Games. As the most successful gymnast in the world, she set new standards in her discipline over 20 years ago. Today in Atlanta, Olga Corbett helps tomorrow's medal hopefuls get a leg up on the sport. Yet as much as the pint-sized talents flex and bend, the way to the Olympic champions podium is still a long one. My dream is to have a, my own gym and I'm here to teaching my students for almost three years and I hope and I think they will be able to go to 2000 Olympic Games to Australia. Surely many a drop of sweat will be shed until then, but who better to give the little gymnast stars of the future a helping hand than the mother of gymnastics as Olga Corbett is reverently called in America. I was a boxer on the 1956 Olympic boxing team in Melbourne, Australia. Hi, my name is Rocky Lane, and we're located at Georgia Tech University campus, which will be the Olympic Village for the 1996 Olympic Games in Atlanta. Also located here on the uh, campus at Georgia Tech is the Alexander Memorial Coliseum, which is the venue for the boxing matches at next year's Olympics. During the games, however, you won't see many students on campus because their dormitories are being renovated and expanded to house approximately 16,000 athletes and coaches and officials from 200 countries. 
The Olympic Village will offer accommodations, free time activities, shopping and restaurants, and entertainment. The village will be heavily guarded due to security reasons. I'm especially proud to mention that I am the president of the Olympians living in Atlanta and the state of Georgia. Of the 107 Olympians living in Georgia, we have 44 medalists, and 30, 30, 31 of those 44 are gold medalists, so we're particularly proud of that. I competed in Los Angeles, 1984, 100-meter hurdle finalist. Hi, my name is Pamela Page, and I'm standing here in front of the Omni in downtown Atlanta, Georgia, which will be host to the 1996 Olympic Volleyball Tournament. The Omni seats 16,400 spectators. If it's going to be fast food, then why not make it the specialty of the southern states? Atlanta is considered to be the spare ribs capital. And nowhere do these delicious grilled morsels taste better than at the Rib Shack Country Kitchen. Everything here revolves around the typical soul food, delicacies that mirror both the lifestyle and the history of the South in a culinary fashion. Calories count instead of vitamins. Welcome to the realm of the senses. SciTrek, the multi-sensory museum of technology, invites you to feel, see, hear, and be amazed. You won't find any do not touch signs here. In fact, participation is very much encouraged. 150 different scientific exhibits are waiting to be perceived and experienced firsthand. SciTrek illustrates laws of nature and demonstrates physical curiosities, a treat not just for curious grown-ups. In an area especially for children, kids aged 2 to 7 can discover the wondrous world of technology for themselves. Atlanta takes a special place among the big cities of the American South thanks to the tolerance and openness of her citizens. As Georgia's Secretary of State Max Cleland says, it's the way the people of Atlanta are that makes the city such a fitting place to host the Olympic Games. People like uh, Jimmy Carter uh, running for governor in 1970 and then being sworn in on the steps of the Georgia Capitol said uh, to his fellow Georgians and his fellow Southerners, he said, I tell you quite frankly that the time for uh, racial injustice is over. So I think our political leadership has helped uh, mold uh, a great future for us here in the South by uh, uh, being moderate uh, in, in our politics. So Atlanta now has become, has become a center for social change and for justice and for equity. Uh, and I think it's one of the reasons that the International Olympic Committee, when they came to Atlanta, seeing people of all walks of life and all races uh, working together, playing together, uh, and enjoying life together, uh, decided that Atlanta was a great place to showcase the, uh, the uh, centennial of the Olympic Games. With a height of 250 meters, about 820 feet, Stone Mountain is the largest freestanding granite boulder in the world. Besides being an impressive site, the monolith, its surrounding park, and the Stone Mountain Lake offer a chance for stressed out city dwellers to get some rest and relaxation. However, if you don't want to give up the urban life, even in your free time, then you should visit the Stone Mountain Village, a small historical southern village still in its original 19th century style. The town's businesses have adapted to handle the large number of visitors that have come here in recent years. Cafes, bars, souvenir stands, and shops of all kinds are just waiting for visitors in a buying mood. Afterwards, 
you can get away from it all via airborne cable rail. Directly up to the windy but peaceful summit of Stone Mountain. We're not exactly sure what this gentleman just said, but it must have had something to do with the rich array of choices at one of the world's biggest drive-in restaurants. Since 1928, the Varsity has been serving up the entire spectrum of American fast food. This inn eating spot is a true institution for all of those who are both hungry and in a hurry, and it's known among Georgia Tech students as the inofficial cafeteria. Looking for a new and different shopping experience? Then you definitely should descend to the depths of Underground Atlanta, a former railroad junction that has been turned into a subterranean shopping center. It has its own information desks and maps to ensure that nobody gets lost in this gigantic, air-conditioned cellar of commerce. 130 different shops cordially invite you to spend some of your hard-earned money here. Due to its countless trinkets, knickknacks, and souvenir stores, the underground has the reputation of being a tourist trap. Without a doubt, everyone is more than welcome here. Nevertheless, this place is a favorite shopping attraction among Atlantans as well. That's because you'll find just about everything under the sun, underground. And after you've exhausted all the possibilities offered by boutiques, jewelry stores, department stores, shops and stands, you can take a break and just stroll around enjoying the unique atmosphere that the underground has to offer. Down here, you're likely to meet some very interesting people, too. Hi, my name is Stephanie Wright, and this is my neighborhood, Virginia Highlands. Welcome. Reason being, it's called Virginia Highlands. It's right down the street, Virginia and Highland Street meet. It's a great neighborhood, lots to do, lots to see, and there's a great place here to get some wonderful coffee. So why don't you come with me? We'll head on over to Starbucks and get a cup of java. Here we are. I love this place. Hi, how's it going? Great. What can we get for you? Um, although you have so many different kinds of coffee, I think I'm gonna have something from the bakery. I'll have okay. a chocolate chunk cookie. Cinnamon scum. Okay, sounds good. There you go. Oh, that looks great. It's gonna be two ninety seven. Right. Which should I start eating first? I don't know. In Virginia Highland, you'll experience the other Atlanta. Here, the hustle and bustle of the fast-paced metropolis is lost among narrow streets that wind their way past cafes, galleries, and restaurants. Musicians, painters, and those who simply excel in the art of living take their inspiration from the neighborhood's European flair, and after a hard day's work, more than one stressed-out businessman finally finds a moment to unwind here. What Virginia Highland has to offer is both varied and convenient at the same time. 
That's because everything's right around the corner. Unlike the hectic activity of the big malls, here you'll find a chance to do some shopping in a laid-back atmosphere. From exceptional handicrafts to kitsch, the small rows of shops offer just about everything a customer's heart could desire. And that includes the right outfit for dinner in a fine restaurant or a night on the town. After all, there's a lot to discover in Virginia Highland after dark, too. What do you think? Well, I hope you enjoy your trip to Virginia Highlands. Have fun. The most breathtaking view of the Olympic City Atlanta can be had for just one dollar from the observation platform of the Weston Peachtree Plaza, the highest hotel in the Western Hemisphere. Welcome to the city of Atlanta and the world of Coca-Cola. What would a trip to Atlanta be without a visit to the home of the most famous soft drink company in the world, Coca-Cola? The world of Coca-Cola opened in August of 1990 as the repository of the history of the world's most famous soft drink. In this building, we have more than 1,000 pieces of memorabilia that are all authentic, but the trace, the wonderful history of the product as well as the city and its impact on the world. One of the main things that makes the building so popular is that there's something for everyone. We have state-of-the-art technology with touchscreen videos. We have a wonderful movie that was filmed around the world on six continents showing different cultures enjoying Coca-Cola. We have a replica of a 1930s, 40s soda fountain, complete with soda jerk, who demonstrates how the product was, salt, was served in those days, as well as a futuristic soda fountain that is just a marvel and a spectacular way to get your beverage. And of course, visitors can relive their childhood by watching some of the vintage Coca-Cola commercials. But I think the most interesting area is what we call the Tastes of the World, where visitors can taste products made by the Coca-Cola company around the world that are not available anywhere in the United States and perhaps not outside of the countries where they are served. So there's something for everyone. And of course, we close with a wonderful retail store where you can buy just about everything you've wanted with a Coca-Cola logo on it. So it's a total experience for everyone. Atlanta Symphony Orchestra enjoys an excellent reputation worldwide. The main reason for this is the orchestra's star conductor, Yoel Levy. In the 80s when I was offered to come to Atlanta from Cleveland, I felt that there is tremendous potential in this community. This is one of the most exciting cities in the country, one of the most blossoming cities and communities, and I felt there is something special here in the people, in the city, and what can be done. Atlanta Symphony Orchestra is one of the truly youngest organizations in the country. We just celebrated our 50th birthday last season. And in such a short time, this orchestra has become one of the truly finest and greatest orchestras of our country and of this world. This is one of the most recorded orchestra. We have over 14 Grammy Awards and over 50 recordings, and we keep recording a great deal year after year, season after season, with the Atlanta Orchestra and with Atlanta Symphony Chorus as well. 
We have a great tradition of coral work here that were established by Robert Shaw. And in the past decade, this orchestra has thrived to levels that never heard before.